All right, we are. Jo- I am joined now by somebody who uh, is an LA hero, uh, a Lakers champion, somebody who uh, gave, I think, the greatest press conference in the history of press conferences. And uh, he's heading into the next kind of chapter of, of his post basketball life. Meta World Peace is joining me here uh, right now. Meta, thank you very much for hopping on. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. How, uh, how's, how's everything? How are you enjoying uh, retirement? I'm seeing here that you're doing uh, some work here with Orbit to, uh, to kickstart your, your venture capitalist uh, kind of phase. How, can you tell me about that project? Yeah, Orbit is uh, one of our portfolio companies. Uh, it's also a company that we like. So we're going to do some marketing with it. And I like the fact that, you know, we're going to give people an opportunity to uh, raise some money. Uh, with no equity being taken and it's just a really good thing it's a really good platform and we need more platforms like this it sounds really cool the ability to to keep the equity and also partner with with you on on that um is is the kind of opportunity more small businesses frankly need um i am curious about you know the 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 move into business and stuff like that and Mm -hmm you know, post-retirement, that kind of a thing is, you know, I've, I've always been fascinated by athletes. You retire in your thirties and you're trying to figure out what kind of what comes next. Uh, can you talk to me about the, the, the move into retirement and, and how difficult that was kind of at first and then how you've kind of found your footing in it over, over the years? Yeah. You know, I, initially I didn't really know what I wanted to do because I was, uh, just accustomed to entertaining, going on television, doing things like that, trying to do my own shoes, doing all merchandise, doing a little bit of music, some rap. You know, I, I was, uh, and being in LA, so I was used to that type of uh, pursuing, you know, of anything you want to do. But now, you know, I, I was exposed to other opportunities and investing and uh, and, and just thinking about things deep, deeply. Mm-hmm. And you look at the opportunities that athletes have you, know, you got opportunities to do so much uh, merchandise, you know, book book sales, speaking engagements, and the list goes on and on and on. So if you could somehow, you know, create a process where you could take advantage of those things you like, then why not, right? And that, that's that's my perspective on kind of business, and I'm just trying to apply it. You've always you've always seemed very interested in in helping people. I remember when you got to LA, one of the first things that you did was announce, hey. I'm going to be on the beach. I'm going to go play some, I think it was soccer, right? Soccer or football. I'm going to be on the yeah. beach. I'm going to go out and play mm-hmm. some soccer. I'm going to go play some football. Um, you've always been very interested in, in kind of the human element of, of the platform that basketball has afforded you. And I feel like that's a, a very natural kind of move into the work that you're doing, you're doing here. Yeah, no, for sure. When I first came in, I was just trying to build some type of organic or fan base, you know, in the cities that I go to. So I always try to be creative, you know, from that mm-hmm. perspective. And uh, I think uh, it was fun. I, I learned a lot just by thinking like that. But now it's like, it's really hard to scale that. And there's a lot of work to so always yeah. have to go out, engage with the fans personally, which is great. It sounds great. But to do that every day is really hard. So I had to ask myself questions like, you know, do I want to keep on doing this as, as I get older? get into a different phase. So I'm just thinking about it differently, uh, mm-hmm. but still applying like what, you know, my love to meet people and connect people, just applying that to my businesses or, 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 or how I work in my daily life. I feel like basketball lends itself really well to that. Like as a sport, it's not like baseball is a collection of individual sports, right? It's, you just kind of tally it up at the end of the game. Basketball though, it's a lot more, you play off of somebody. Pickup basketball has always been this fascinating thing. My wife played soccer, um, and it's kind of like that. But like the notion of pickup basketball, where you show up to a gym, you've never played with the, you know most of the people that you're playing with there before, but you do immediately know kind of the language of basketball. And and for somebody like yourself, who's always been very outgoing, I feel like it's always been like you off of the court has always been almost more fun to watch from a distance as, as you on the court. No, it's true. I try, I tried to create, um, some type of a superstar, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, when I came, when I was first getting into everything and realized what the fame was bringing me, I said, you know, I can make some, try to make it a little bit fun. 
Mm -hmm. You know, so do things on social or TMZ or or news or make media doing something uh, to get more opportunity, to get more fan engagement, to get more people recognizing my name and then take that to the next level on television, do movies and maybe even music. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's definitely was well, a strategy to it. I don't think I had a strategy that was actually laid out where I could execute on what I was trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm thinking about it differently, you know, uh, definitely was, I think I was early when it came to trying to build your brand uh, and different things like that. And, and a brand in the way you want to see it. You know, for me, it was more yeah. entertainment. I used to do comedy. Uh, I wanted to be on television. And now since I, since I, I kind of missed that phase, because I'm not willing to go on stage and do comedy again. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not willing to go through the circuit and act and do what I got to do to act again. I'm just not, I feel like that missed me. But what mm -hmm. I took from it was the, the possibilities. Yeah. Right? And it was the possibilities. You can, you can give that back to the people that's coming you know, after you. That's, that's really cool. Um, I'm going to segue over to, to basketball here. Obviously, the Lakers have been, you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. been it's been a, a, a tough season here so far. Yeah, um, yeah. I I watched obviously like those the 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 teams that you were on with with Kobe and with Pow and with Odom. Uh, those are my favorite teams of all time. Uh, that was you know the basketball that you guys were playing there was just incredible. Um, and and it was just it, it was interesting though because we got to see it. We saw the the incline. We yeah. saw you guys win your couple titles and then we also got to see and stuck with the window as it was closing. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering as a player in that kind of environment, is there ever a moment where you kind of realize, Oh man, our window might be shut. Did you ever feel that? Or is it like, or do you only recognize that after the fact? I feel like our window was closed in 2012. After, I, thought, I thought after that season, mm -hmm. it'd be difficult, but I thought we, we can pull out a championship in a game seven because uh, I didn't think we was going to win in four or five or six. Mm -hmm. But I did think with the type of team we had, the window was closing. Obviously, in my prime, if I, if I played with like Kobe in my prime or something like that, yeah, you're talking about 4-1 sweeps. <laughs> 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 but I, not towards the end of our career, I felt like, you know, we were older and, uh, yeah, it was closing. The I'm glad that you mentioned – the phase of your career you were at when you got to the Lakers, we're seeing Russ right now come off of the bench and we're seeing, you know, LeBron, he's been pushing, trying to push AD to, to, Hey man, like I'm, I'm about to turn 40. Can you maybe be like the, the guy here? And, and this notion of sacrifice in sports and, and especially professional sports where you guys grow up and you are the best player in your city and, and, and on all of the teams that you've played on. And then you get to this setting and you immediately are asked to sacrifice. How did you, like coming from, you know, obviously you were the dude in, in Indiana and then in Chicago and then, and then in Sacramento, I thought, I thought I, I really enjoyed watching you play there. And then you, uh, you give the Lakers a real hard time in Houston and then eventually you make your way to the Lakers and, and, you know, kind of steadily you go from, you know, at one point defensive player of the year, potential MVP kind of candidate to, Hey, we need you to be a three and D wing. How how difficult was that over the course of your career? And and as you're watching Russ do some of that same stuff, would you have any advice for him? Well, yeah, uh, and definitely I want to before. Uh, so with Russ and, and and his style of play, uh, I definitely want to just plug the uh, orbits real quick. Though. Oh yeah, go for it. And then I'm going to actually get to that question. But obviously, you can go to orbit.com/slash pitch by Meta Orbit mm -hmm. with three eyes. And that's where we're doing a big contest that um, definitely will appreciate you, Anthony. But and then to answer your question, um, when I came over, you know, from the Rockets to L.A., I didn't think I was going to play that bad. <laughs> but I, I played pretty well, but I didn't think my offense was going to be that bad. I thought I'd be OK. Um, but the volume shooting wasn't there. I, was, I wasn't really ready mentally not to be a volume shooter and then to be yeah. OK. Uh, having some bad games or having a game where it might look like you play bad, but you didn't. The only reason mm -hmm. it looked like it because the stats is not there and you're not in rhythm, but you're doing everything the same. I didn't get to that point until halfway through the season. Actually, more and more in the playoffs, I started to realize that 
just play. You're not going to play great. But it took me a whole season to go through it. It took mm-hmm. Russ one full season, too. And now you see Russ season two. After his first season, he's playing away. He's playing better. Yeah. He looks better. And it takes about a year for, you know, teams to gauge, uh, you know, to uh, build synergy anyway. You know, especially people like LeBron and Russ and AD, when you're bringing them on the same team and they're not in a prime, right, you, it takes a little while for that to gel. And that's what it feels like Russell's doing, you know, and obviously you got LeBron and AD on your team. Yeah, yeah, you're probably going to cater to them a little bit, right? Even with a great player like Russell. Um, and that's what we're seeing. Yeah, he's it's he was always so like I whenever I used to watch Russ from afar, it was more like he was this tornado who was over there and and he would kind of figure out how to, you know, best utilize that energy and that chaotic energy and 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 allow that production to come out. But when you play with LeBron, obviously he wants to walk the ball up the court a little bit more. And he wants to 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 ask everybody else to kind of pick their spots, and and yeah, it was it was tough watching Russ do that. Now he's kind of moved to the bench, and 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 we're seeing him get back to more of that chaotic energy. Um, was that something that that you ever considered? You know, coming off of the bench, or 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 or, or was it kind of like, hey, because I I know this is yeah, kind you of don't the deal with... to come off the bench, not not when you're a starter your whole career. So I can see yeah. how I felt the same way. Uh, I, I didn't. I came off the bench actually in my prime when I was at the Rockets, mm-hmm. and they were starting to bring me off the bench um, in the beginning of the season. Apparently, I was like declining, but then I started to play and play very well. You know, mm-hmm. I showed that I could play. I could play defense. I could move, and people couldn't stop me. But then the next year, I wasn't shooting the ball as much. And then two years later, or maybe even four years, I started to hit the bench come off the bench, yeah. which I wasn't really used to at all. And that that's not a tough pill to swallow, especially when you're used to starting no matter where you go, you know, you're going to be in that starting lineup. How, how do, how do former players watch what's going on with Russ? Cause I, I know like he's, he's a future hall of famer. He's one of, you know, two players to average the kind of numbers that he did over the course of those few seasons when he was an MVP kind of talent. Right. And, and obviously, former players look at the game very differently from nerds like myself. And so, like, is it is it is it just is it a relatable thing? Is it is it like put yourself in that guy's shoes? And and man, I don't know if I'd be able to do that. Or is it, or like, is there any is there ever any like sympathy for the player? Is there is there any kind of man this? this sucks to watch this guy go through that because it's kind of everybody's nightmare watching, having be on that stage and, and declining in that kind of way. I mean, I think it's fine when I'm watching an older player, I'm just enjoying, I, I smile a little bit. Uh huh. You know, maybe the older player, uh, probably, uh, you know, missed a shot. Right. Yeah. And instead of saying that player is getting older and looking bad, I'm just like, Oh wow. He had a good career. He's getting a little older. Smile about yeah. it because when a player starts declining, they still have about four to five more years anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, contracts, That's uh, interesting. Men- mentorship, all type of things the teams might call them to stay for a little longer, looking like Haslam. So, and then it takes a while for them to officially not even play in the game. But, you know, two, three years, you're going to be playing. You know, you'll be okay. And then your last couple of years, you'll be on the bench. And I think from that perspective, we should just enjoy it because it, it's, really, it's really incredible to see a player get old. Mm-hmm. I think we should enjoy it. Then we'll be able to see more players get old. Imagine, you know, LeBron James out there getting a little older, can't quite <laughs> move anymore. Yeah, you know, we don't want to discourage him from playing. We want to see the old guy out there. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Meta is here yeah. again on on behalf of Orbit Technology. He's done this really cool project, Pitch. Um, I'll let you kind of plug it here at the very end and give you plenty of space to to do that. Couple last questions here, though. Um, on that front, you mentioned Haslam. Did you ever think about reaching out to the Lakers and be like, hey, that seems like a really cool job that that guy has over there. Like, <laughs> can what I, can I be oh, just like, uh, oh, just like, like Haslam just like get to get to chill on the end of the end of the bench, get to play till you're like 40 years old and, 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 and mentor the, the kids and make sure that the coach has that voice in, in, in the locker room and in the huddle. It was that a, was that a role that you ever saw for yourself? Could you have fulfilled that role? I mean, I think uh, Haslam started with the Miami Heat, which is very unique. Yeah. So, you know, the Lakers, I had a good moment 
with the Lakers, but I didn't start with the Lakers and end with the Lakers, you know? Yeah. So Haslam is, is super unique that the relationship that he built and kept with the, with the Miami organization. Yeah, I, I, cool. I, I really like it. That's the way. That, that's the way to do it. You know, that's the way to start there, finish there, be stable. You know, you get a guy like Haslam, who's a, from I guess from Miami and stuff like that, and now he's mm-hmm. with one organization. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he's gonna wind up getting a jersey retired. Mm-hmm. He's he's gonna get his jersey retired in 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 Miami, and and the back half of his career has been kind of as yeah, like yeah. a pseudo it's coach. Been great. He deserves it. I think he really does. Yeah, he truly, I, I, really does. They they love him. They trust him. He's great. So uh, last thing, last basketball question I have for you before we get out of here. Obviously, the Lakers are struggling, and, and I know that you've been paying attention. I, I watch you on, on Spectrum whenever you're on there, and um, they have this dec- decision ahead of them, and they are trying to figure out, like, are there, is, it, is it worth it to gamble these two picks that they have and bring in help for AD and LeBron now? If you were a player on that team and they and and a player who you knew, you know, you know you're gonna be around, you're part of the rotation, so you would be there and, and the help would come and, and and you would be assisted by that help. How does that like how do how do players handle this kind of a situation where it's like it's not a matter of if a trade is going to happen, it's more a matter of when. I, I just feel like this year's gotta be super tough on everybody in that locker room. Well, you know, a trade might not happen. You know, maybe, maybe they make it the whole season. So as a player, you, you hear what's going on. You're, in, you know, you're on ESPN, Fox, or wherever else you're at. Mm-hmm. And you're reading. And you, it, it, you really don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're trying to predict when this is going to happen. You just go out there and play because the game is fun. Now, we do get attached to it. Even though yeah. it's business, we get paid. People don't understand that as a player – you put so much passion into the game. If you play for a team, yeah. that's like your family, right? So if you get cut or traded, you're going to feel hurt because basketball is everything to you. So it doesn't feel like a business now. Looking from the outside, from the outside looking in, I would just treat it like a business. Yeah. You know, if you get traded, you hear things like continue on with your day, continue on smiling, continue on like, you know, buying more real estate and continue on like, you know, because it's a great life, right? It's basketball. You're going to get traded. People will get traded no matter how nice you are, right? Yeah. It's just a game. Everybody's trying to position themselves. So I would just have fun with it. It's, it's, it's a big game, a big business game, and just have fun. Absolutely. All right. So uh, one more time, you're on. You're, you're here with us on behalf of Orbit Technology. Uh, it, it's a really cool project where basically it's it's like Shark Tank. It's It's more, it's like a virtual Shark Tank. And these small businesses approach you and uh, you get to, to help with whatever it is that they're doing. There's, I guess, prizes that are involved here, uh, but they keep their equity. So that's a unique part of this. What, what are you getting out of it if you aren't getting some of the equity to help them with this? Or is it just like we talked about the human element of this, the partnership that, that you've enjoyed throughout your career? Yeah, well, you know, we're getting a lot of fans coming onto our platform in which, Mm -hmm. you know, then you can make better decisions later when you get that, you know, influx of traffic. For us, building, you know, building this type of platform is going to, is for the people, right, to to launch their startup and protect some of their equity. And then you go from there. You know, for us, we feel like that's a great idea, right, to help, you know, be able to help a new startup get some capital and you still have your equity. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you can make a decision later because sometimes you give up equity quick because you don't really know how to navigate it. Then you're like, man, I wish I would have never gave up that much equity. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and sometimes you need a little time to mature as a company. Yeah. Uh, so it's like with those different, we feel like it's a perfect opportunity, it adds excitement, and it can go viral and different things like that. Awesome. All right. So one more time that's uh, orbit.com. So orb, O R B. I I I T dot com slash contest contest. Yeesh, I get paid to talk. Uh, <laughs> slash, slash the pitch by Meta. Uh, thank you very much, Meta, for taking time out of your day. I appreciate it. And uh, and yeah, I'll look for continue to look for you on Spectrum. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.